Note this too, if you short on the load side of the dimmer, the lighting side of the dimmer, you'll blow the dimmer out. Hey, it's Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. Today we're talking about dimmer switches. That's a Lutron three-way LED dimmer switch. The kitchen's almost done, we roughed it in, boom, check our video here. We're finishing out GFCI's overhead lights, under cabinet lights, and it's time for the switching. This is a dead-end three-way switch. Let's take a look at how it's done. This is a Diva dimmer. Customer wanted decor a style. It's LED compatible. Should have a nice smooth dim with the overhead LED lights. That's definitely not a given. LEDs are finicky. Um, a lot of times places won't let you return breakers or dimmer switches because they get damaged, harmed, blown out easily. And nobody wants to return faulted product. So I've got my two switches, my three-way dimmer, which is for the main overhead lights. I'm gonna put those on the right, closest to the point of entry. And my single pole non-dimmer standard switch, which are for the pendants above my head. You've gotta really understand what every conductor in this box is for. And we're gonna start, I like to start if I'm a little bit confused with something easy. So, my switch leg. I'm just gonna plug in my switch leg. I know that's for my pendants. I'm gonna get it out of here as soon as it's allocated, then it's out of my head. This is a, a, a trick for novices, is if you can't comprehend the full picture with a dead end three way, like we've got here, it's a relatively full box. We did calculate wire fill before we did this then start with something easy and know, okay, I've got that settled. This is my hot. I've got it marked with black tape because I wanna understand my incoming hot to the box. That's gonna tee up everything for success. So I'm, I'm really fond of these lever connectors at this point and I'm transitioning the team. There's one, there's two. And in this case, because I have a dead end three way, my white that has been relabeled has now become a hot conductor. So it's taking places, my hot comes into the box, connects to my white conductor, which jumps to the other end of my three-way, and then my travelers connect there, come back to this box, and then my common is my switch leg. It's gonna make more sense here in a minute. All right, I'm gonna shorten up, shorten up this lead a little bit. Had to reference the instructions. Uh, did remind me of one good thing I wanna tell you is that unless you have a maestro dimmer, possibly a couple other elite dimmers out there on the market. You can only have one dimmer on a three-way lighting circuit. And the reason for that is if you've got dimmers at both locations, you'll be constrained to the lowest common denominator, right? If one's dimmed down all the way and you go to the other dimmer and you try to dim it up, nothing's gonna happen. You're constrained by the lowest common denominator. So one dimmer on a three-way or a four-way and so I think what we found is that the black is common. Shorten that up a little bit. Your strip length for wire nuts and the lever nuts is a little bit different. All right, let's take care of our grounds here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to peel off one ground. It's longer than the others on purpose. There's so many different ways to do grounding, but this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna peel off one ground that is longer than the others. I'm gonna tie it back in there. Then I'm gonna incorporate my dimmer ground with the others. I'm gonna slide on this green grounding wing nut, come on, come on. The conductor's not very straight, that's the only reason it's struggling. There it is. So now this is my mechanical connection that's required by code to incorporate all of my grounds. Yep, tug test reveals that it's firmly attached. So now my dimmer's grounded. My grounding continuity is complete. And all I need to do is wrap this around my single pull switch. Make sure your switches are in the proper orientation. And that is, they both indicate up. 
All my connections are final. It looks kind of busy, so now it's time to carefully tuck things back in the box so it's all gonna fit seamlessly. If you're really uncertain of yourself, what you might do is energize the circuit, give it a test, make sure everything works, de-energize the circuit, and put it all in the wall. At this point, I'm 99%. These dimmers are deep, so you gotta really make sure things are tucked in there well. Particularly with all this mess, ooh, buddy. I can't tell you what it is yet, but we have something really big coming down the pike at Jefferson Electric. It's gonna be revolutionary. Revolutionary, we will never be the same. And I hope it's the right decision. I mean, I'm certain today that it's the right decision, but I've been wrong once before. And once the deal is done, I'll tell you what it is. I'm not there yet, look at that. Mm, three quarters of an inch, three eighths of an inch short. It's packed, it's jammed. I'll have to make better use of the space on the left side of the switch box. At least three things to note. When your finished paint is on the walls and your dimmer switch is hanging there, man, you can really easily get a little bit of scarring. I've got just a couple tiny little bits, but they'll be covered by the plates. So respect the finished surfaces. Secondly, if you use different brands, let's say I've got like a Hubble switch and a Lutron like I do now, then there's a risk that you'll get a different finish, a different brilliance of white, and it's not gonna be a good look for a space that's gonna be scrutinized like a brand new kitchen. So match your brand of your plates and your devices and get a uniform appearance. And then occasionally the brands go through a style update. So you can get differences across brands, uh, or even the same brand, um, not just various brands, when they hit those style updates. So you've gotta be really attentive to those details. Um, so protect the finished surfaces, watch your brands, match your styles, and um, if you know, you know you've got a customer who really cares about their kitchen, most do, then you probably even wanna run the finished product past them on the rough-in so they can make selections and then when you show up on the finish out, there's no running around town, there's no pulling off the job. You're set, you're square, you're ready to go. So we bridge that conversation and I think we're gonna encounter success today. One stop shop. The general contractor's gonna hang these three lights. They're real handy, real on it kind of contractor and we've got lots of rapport between us. So we will not be returning for any loose ends after today. Note this too, if you short on the load side of the dimmer, the lighting side of the dimmer, you'll blow the dimmer out. And sometimes you'll lose total functionality depending on the dimmer, but sometimes you'll just lose the dimming function. It can be a variety of situations. And so if the dimmer is working as a switch and not as a dimmer, it probably got blown. And they're real sensitive, so you could blow the dimmer without blowing the circuit. It is possible. That ground is really, impinging on this dimmer laying flat. And then electrical contractors, your, uh, your profits are slim. Your job is complicated, your risk is high. If you don't incorporate upsells, you see, you can knock out a $3,000 kitchen job. One customer, a set of communication, mobilization, soft costs, permits, everything's static. And if you fail to upsell with dimmers, LED upgrades, under cabinet lights, all of those extras on that customer, guess what? You're leaving so much gravy on the table because your fixed costs, the mobilizations, the permits, all of those things, the soft costs, the communications, all of those are fixed. And instead of rushing on to the next customer thinking you're doing a you know, working hard and that's good enough. Slow it down and work smarter and upsell all of these little extras. Surge protection, which is now required in the 2020 code. Under cabinet lighting upgrade, which you can sell for on a, on a big kitchen, that could be a $2,500 line item. It could be a $4,500 line item. Don't, please don't rush on to the next job until you have satisfied, fully satisfied the customer on the job you're on right now. That's penny wise and pound foolish. All right, screws are pre-installed. There's an up arrow to indicate top, up, so you get the, in the proper orientation. And the reason it's got an orientation to it is because at the bottom, there are these notches for removal. And it's kind of got a little bit of static electricity. 
The National Electrical Code does require plates to be flush to the finished surface. You can't have your plate hanging way off the wall. And unfortunately for this general contractor, there's one, two blemishes that are gonna need to be touched up before that can be considered final. Too bad. Yeah, I'm a little bit off. Looked a little bit off. Did you get that? Let's true it up here a little bit. True it up. There it is. Hey, the kitchen's wrapped. Three-way lighting is wrapped up as well. Ah, there it is. Dim, 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 dim. Subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.